Hey guys, welcome you all to your first ever lecture with me. I am Saili and I will be teaching you biology. So let's quickly start with our first topic. But wait a second, you need to decode our today's topic. So before it, I will be giving you a short riddle to solve and let's see whether you can decode it. Here is your riddle. Who am I? I am part of your body. In fact, I am an organ. I beat or pump 24 by 7. I don't take rest. Tell me, who am I? Hmm, I know you have guessed it right. The answer for this riddle is hard. So let's check what we are going to study today. So today we are going to learn about blood composition, heart internal structure, heart pumping function. So before we actually dive into our lecture, I want to ask you guys one more question. And that is, what fluid does heart pumps out? Mm -hmm, I know, you have guessed it again right. Heart pumps out blood. Blood is also kind of fluid, right? So now let's take a quick overview about blood composition. Blood composed of 55% uh, plasma and 45% blood corpuscles. So this plasma includes 90 to 92% of water, 7% of proteins and 10% of solutes. So now these proteins which you can see over here, 7% of proteins. These include like serum, then globulin, albumin. These all are called as plasma proteins because they are present in plasma. Now, blood corpuscles. These consist of three main cells that are RBC, WBC and platelets. RBCs are also known as erythrocytes. RBCs are also known as erythrocytes. WBCs are also known as leukocytes and platelets are also known as thrombocytes and these all components are included in blood. Now you might have thought what is that thing which gives our blood red color pigment? So that thing is known as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin helps in transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide from various tissue to organs and from organ to different tissues. So this hemoglobin specifically contains iron or ferrous in it which gives red pigmentation or color to our blood. Now let's move on to our next point that is heart structure. So this heart is situated in middle of our thoracic cage slightly tilted towards left and do you know one amazing fact about our heart? Its size is just one's feast, narrow from apex and broad towards base. So here I have shown you diagrammatic representation of ventral view of heart and internal section of heart. And right now on your screen there might be flipping up two more images that are real heart images of ventral view and internal structure. So now this heart is covered up with a layer known as peritoneum but since it covers the cardiac tissue that's why it is known as pericardium. So heart is covered with pericardium. Heart covering is known as pericardium. This pericardium is divided into two layers that is known as divided into fibrous and serous. Again, this serous is divided into parietal outer layer and visceral inner layer. Visceral is also known as epicardium. So now let's see sequential wise the layer of heart. So we are now going to see heart layers and we are seeing from outer to inner side. So 
first layer is fibrous layer then comes our serous layer serous is divided into two which is parietal and visceral parietal is outer layer and visceral is inner layer visceral is also known as epicardium after that comes myocardium and endocardium myocardium is actually a muscle layer and it is related or actually related with the functioning of systole and diastole that is contraction and relaxation of heart muscle in between visceral and parietal layer a fluid is present which is known as pericardial fluid and that prevents heart from direct shock or direct mechanical shock so now let's move on to our next part the most interesting part that is heart pumping function our heart or the mammalian heart is divided into four compartments to separate out oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so oxygenated blood contains higher amount of oxygen and this is carried out by hemoglobin or the rbcs which i have already told you now let's move on to our next part that is internal section of heart so let me introduce all the terms included over here so as i said our heart is divided into four chambers or four compartments so the upper compartments are a bit smaller than the below ones and this both are known as atrium or auricle the below one are a bit in size compared with the above one and this both are known as ventricles now between two ventricles or between two atriums or between atrium and ventricle there is thick tissue or muscle kind thing which is known as septum and over here this is superior vena cava and this is inferior vena cava this is aorta systematic aorta the blue one is known as pulmonary trunk and this both are known as pulmonary veins now what actually happens so now for a better understanding i have decided color codes so we are going to use blue as for deoxygenated blood and red for oxygenated blood now blood from upper part of our body enters through superior vena cava to our right atrium or right auricle and this blood is deoxygenated from below part of our body enters to inferior vena cava to right atrium deoxygenated blood enters into right atrium and also from coronary sinus so from coronary sinus superior vena cava and inferior vena cava deoxygenated right atrium now from blood enters here, into it enters into right ventricle and the right atrium and right ventricle is guarded by tricuspid wall this wall prevents the backward flow of blood so from here from right ventricle the blood enters or blood is pumped into pulmonary trunk from here from pulmonary trunk the deoxygenated blood is moved on to lungs where it gets oxygenated and comes back comes back into pulmonary vein from pulmonary vein it continues its path to left atrium or left auricle from this left auricle it is pumped into left ventricle and this is guarded by bicuspid wall then again from left ventricle the blood is pumped into systematic aorta from here the blood is pumped to all over the body part so for better understanding or for just recall thing 
we are going to represent the chart where you can see or where you can learn easily from where to where the blood enters and from where the blood is pumped on to blood enters from superior and inferior vena cava and coronary sinus to right atrium from right atrium to right ventricle from right ventricle to pulmonary trunk from pulmonary trunk to lungs and from lungs to pulmonary veins and from this pulmonary veins to left atrium from left vent atrium to left ventricle and from left ventricle to aorta and from over here it moves on to the whole body so your whole body is now receiving oxygenated blood which is oxygenated by lungs so this was our short overview on the function of heart the pumping of heart and its infrastructure thank you so much